to kickstart let's listen to the introductory presentation from a speaker from silicon valley he is none other than mr rishi mehta who had joined us all the way from san francisco Mr Rishi is a seasoned technology and a business leader with more than 26 years of experience in various fields of businesses. He has a track record of managing teams, customers spread globally and scaling business from scratch, 900 million dollars per year in revenue grabbing number 1 and number 3 spots in SP and Enterprise WLAN market segments respectively. Some of the companies where he has held leadership roles are Verizon, Airline, Ruckus Networks, Comscope, Ericsson, Redback, Vivas Telabs, Caspian Networks, Lucent Nokia, Stratus Computers besides running his own entrepreneurial venture in the past. Rishi has been awarded 7 US patents and few more are pending. Hello all, this is Rishi. Um a lot of thanks to, you know, uh, Infotech Forum as well as Dr. Deepak for giving me an opportunity to share uh, what's happening latest in the edge compute. And uh, the next few minutes I'll cover uh, what is edge compute, how it's applicable, what are the different use cases and some of the things you we need to, you know, take into consideration for this technology. So this is a housekeeping where you know I just want to state these are my views based on my experience in this field and uh, these are not the views of my current or previous employers and you know please do take permission from Dr Deepak myself as well as in the infotech forum in case you have to distribute the content further coming to the topic of edge compute um you know we are on this journey across different enterprise verticals where we are taking our workloads from on prem to the cloud now going from on prem to the cloud has its benefits as all of you are aware of you know that is uh, you get massive scale uh, you get scale as a result of you know efficiencies you get from the compute the storage uh, all those attributes that you are able to get from the cloud moving to cloud you know we all had to uh, uh, even rearchitect our applications to make them more microservices capable so that you know you could leverage on the uh, cloud architectures underneath now the one of the challenges we are facing is uh, as we are doing more automation and more and more devices are actually entering our enterprise uh, space there is lot more data being generated and as a result of that in some applications not only we need to consume this data soon um, and reliably enough but we need to make some very quick decisions as well and these decisions have to be made um, right next to the source of the data uh, so the response time has to be really quick now imagine if all this data is being consumed by the cloud and then the application or intelligence residing in the cloud has to respond that can be really slow for some of the applications especially that you know need response within a few milliseconds so as a result of that there is another layer of compute what we call as the edge compute think of edge compute like a mini cloud data center which is sitting closer to the enterprise premises so it's like a mini cloud center you brought it closer to the enterprise premises it has all the goodness of a cloud you know like the gpus tpus uh, other processors storage memory it has all those goodness uh, but that is being brought closer and closer to the uh, to the enterprise and in some cases it can even sit inside the enterprise so that you can respond to some of the applications some of the sensors much quickly compared to um, how an application sitting in a central cloud would have responded so that's the main benefit that you get from the edge compute Uh, so that's the primary benefit on the speed and the reduction in the latency now coupled with this you get some more benefits one is the autonomy and what do i mean by autonomy here is now using this edge compute you can manage certain devices users um or a group or domain of you know users and devices you can come out with the policies framework which are very you know independent or which are applicable to this set of domain of users and devices that sort of independent from the uh, central policies 
So you create an autonomous domain, if you would. Second is the data sovereignty. Um, as we all know, you know, the world around us has been very uh, particular about the data, what boundaries it can cross, what boundaries it cannot cross. Now, in a lot of a times, you cannot cross certain regional boundaries, uh, especially when the data is deemed to be sensitive. And if your central cloud is far off, it crosses certain geographical boundaries or even the country boundaries, you really can't you know, transport the data all the way um, across certain boundaries to the central cloud. As a result of that, edge compute data centers, you know, they have the second benefit of maintaining that data sovereignty. Then the third benefit, side benefit that you get is the operational efficiency. You know, um, if from an edge compute or an edge data center, edge cloud, I'm able to manage certain type of applications and devices because they need certain latency guarantees or they need certain SLAs, uh, then I can build upon my backend systems, uh, my operational models in such a way that you know, it's a lot more efficient uh, for you know, those group of devices uh, compared to you know, if I had to build a separate architecture um, in the central cloud uh, for, for these time sensitive um, applications and the devices. So those are you know, the additional benefits that you get besides uh, uh, the primary benefit of speed and latency. Now, <clears throat> the edge, you know, um, everybody has a slightly different idea of where the edge can be located. The edge can go anywhere from the regional data center all the way inside of the premises. So you can have a regional data center act as an edge compute or as an edge data center. Uh, you can start building them at the provider edge, or you, know, you can start building them right inside the premises as close as you want to the user or to the access layer. It all depends on the particular use case and application that you're solving. There is no one particular definition of edge that fits all the use cases. This is something to keep in mind. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's very difficult to satisfy uh, the latency needs and the other needs um, of the devices and applications if you were to run just one kind of an architecture. Now, this trend, you know, where, the, where is this edge computing trend headed? If you look at some of these third party uh, research reports, uh, in the coming time, you will see more and more data that will be processed outside of the central cloud or the traditional data centers, which means my data will be processed in the edge centers, edge compute centers, or on the prem. And I would say in some cases, even the end devices are getting so powerful that they are able to process uh, some amount of data as well and make some very intelligent decisions. So I think this definition of edge is going to, uh, going to basically uh, change moving forward. So it all depends, you know, uh, as long as you're moving out of the central cloud because of the uh, latency reasons, the edge can reside in different places as we just discussed based on the use case and application. It's very interesting, you know, how the pendulum, if, you, if one notices how the pendulum has swung back um, and, and, and currently compared to the last few years, we used to be our applications say 15 to 20 years ago, 20 years ago were all on-prem then we started moving, having the journey to move towards cloud, SaaS and cloud. We went through you know, the different flavors of cloud, public cloud, private cloud. Basically we were moving our application logic as well as data outside of the prem. And now we're trying to bring back some of the application logic and the related data closer to the enterprise, closer to the venues. So this is what I mean by you know, pendulum is swinging back uh, from where it began. But I think moving forward, it is not about edge versus central cloud. It is about both of them coexisting. We just have to figure out where exactly the edge for your application would reside, the edge compute for your application would reside. Central cloud will still continue to play its role for all the non uh, time sensitive applications. Uh, it will still work. Uh, it will still get you know onloaded and onboarded 
with all the uh, non real time applications but the edge compute is going to come to you know the aid of the central cloud architecture where you need um, a real time response in some of the applications so that's how thing that's how we have to think i think both these uh, kind of architectures would would complement each other moving forward now <clears throat> Edge compute applications, if you look carefully, um, they impact all the enterprise verticals, not just one or two. And here I'll share with you uh, just few of the enterprise verticals uh, where there's an impact. Um, so I'll go with the catalyst use cases and some of the foundational technologies that are being utilized in all of them. What are some of the catalysts? If you look at the retail, Retail is going through the catalyst like, you know, customers need the real time engagement right there and then they need to decide whether they want to buy the product. You see the customers actually taking phones with them to the physical stores where they take the pictures of the products, check online all the reviews, check the price, and then they determine whether they are going to buy this product in the store or not. So that's the kind of real time engagement that's happening. Sales teams are doing the same thing as soon as they spot a customer in the store you know they get notified they'll come to you come to the customer and start engaging with you to to figure out you know how to how to address your concerns better so these this is you know some big uh, shift happening in the customer behavior if you notice now in terms of the use cases that it's spanning out is uh, there is a lot of in store operational visibility which means not only do I as a store owner or as a sales manager in the store, I know what is, where is my footfall of the traffic for the customers. I understand the inventory of my products, which are flying off the shelves right away in the real time. And also in some of the cases where customers are hard pressed for time, but stores are well organized, and you want to basically uh, save time for, for everybody. Uh, you see nowadays pick, pay, and go kind of stores like Amazon Go stores, where you walk in. These are completely cashier less stores where you walk in, pick up the item from the shelf, and basically, you know, uh, and automatically you pay at the payment counter where there is no cashier at all, you know, and, and you move out. And these stores are becoming norm in some of the places like airports and some of the downtowns. Uh, and I think in the coming time, you'll see more and more such stores panning out uh, where you have you know, uh, products which are kept in discrete locations, which can be picked up, paid, and as a customer, you move on. So underneath, there is a heavy use of technologies. There are a lot of sensors in these stores. There is a video analytics um, that are being put in place. And to, and, and you now can imagine, you know, all these technologies have to come together so that the response can be in the real time. I pick up a bottle of Coke from the shelf, you know, a sensor should be able to detect that a Coke bottle has been picked up by me. It needs to be determined within a few milliseconds. I come to uh, the cashier desk where there's no cashier. My bottle of Coke gets scanned. You know, the weight has to be determined. Uh, the barcode scanning has to be right. And then I should be able to pay through my phone or through some other mobile payments right on the spot. And all these transactions have to be done very abruptly, quickly, nearly in the real time. So that you know, there, is, there are no large queues, nothing. The process works effortlessly. So this is just one example of what's going to happen in the retail. Look at manufacturing and warehouse. It's going through a bigger shift, a very cat, a big catalyst right now, what is called as Industry 4.0. Uh, industry 4.0 you know relies on heavy automation uh, if you look at what kind of use cases it leads to heavy automation a lot of communication between machine to machine between iot sensors and in some of these cases the machines have to respond to each other in few milliseconds less than 10 milliseconds there cannot be any room for error out here uh, when machines are talking to each other and it has to be very very deterministic given this you have to rely a lot again on technologies like IoT sensor, industrial IoTs, uh, video, robotics, and uh, and there is a need not only for the fast connectivity but also need to make quick decisions based on some AI machine learning algorithms. You can't afford to run these AI and machine learning algorithms 
in the cloud, in the central cloud, they have to be run closer to these machines. So one place where you can run them is basically on the edge compute, which is closer right to the manufacturing or the warehouse. So the edge compute center can be very close to the manufacturing or the warehouse centers, or they can be inside the manufacturing and the warehouse uh, centers based on you know, how you architect it. Um, healthcare, something similar we are seeing. Uh, what we are, the big shift on the business side that we are seeing on the healthcare is healthcare costs are rising around the world, right? Patients have to be treated in the real time. So, uh, and there's a physician shortage. We all saw what happened with Corona. It was a challenge uh, on the medical facilities. How do you solve some of this crisis? Telemedicine, remote patient monitoring and remote patient you know, uh, diagnostics. Lot of collaborative work among the surgeons and uh, remote surgeries, all possible through you know uh, the technologies like uh, reliable, fast connectivity, augmented reality, virtual reality, the use of AI and ML. This is possible only when you actually build a low latency network. So it is not only about the connectivity in terms of low latency, but also think about you know, uh, uh, your architecture for the applications, where the application needs to reside, what kind of workload needs to reside where, so that you know, even the application response time can be a lot quicker. So applications are getting distributed now. Part of the application is coming on edge compute or on-prem, and other part is going to reside in the cloud. The part of application, the part of AI, machine learning application that comes on the edge compute, basically will be responsible for uh, for basically responding in the mo more or less in the real time in few milliseconds, uh, so that you know you can solve some of these urgent healthcare problems where basically a remote and collaborative surgeries are involved. There is no room for basically delays out there. So so this is how we see uh, you know the fulcrum of these technologies, diverse technologies uh, from IoT sensors, video, robotics, AR, VR connectivity, all of them coming together uh, to basically aid edge compute uh, and delivering uh, basically a near um, real-time response to some of the applications. So it is not about just compute and storage coming closer by itself to the enterprises, but it is the rest of the technologies uh, have to be architected in the solution in such a way that you can leverage on the mini cloud data center uh, the cloud compute technology is coming closer and closer to the enterprises uh, so that you can give a near real-time response uh, to, to some of these uh, applications and solve the use cases. Now, and, and I covered some of those verticals, but you know, uh, if, you, if you stretch basically all, there are more use cases in other verticals also like stadiums, large public venues, uh, convention centers, education, hospitality, in every vertical, there is a need for some of the applications which need a, a near real-time response uh, where edge compute comes to an aid. What makes edge compute successful? And as I was saying, it is not only about, you know, bringing the mini cloud data center closer to the enterprises. There are a few other things that you take into account. One is the connectivity. The connectivity has to be really fast. Otherwise, you defeat the whole purpose of near real-time response, which means, you know, you need to look into fiber, private 5G connections, or, you know, millimeter wave based uh, technologies uh, so that, you know, you can build this uh, fast backhaul, fast, you know, uh, transmission links to the edge compute uh, centers. Um, there needs to be reliable backup paths in case, you know, your primary connectivity fails, the secondary connectivity should still be alive. Otherwise, this defeats the purpose of, you know, real time response. Um, application intelligence. Now, the, some of the applications have to be re-architected. There is a lot of work. Earlier, we were actually in the uh, earlier as I was covering, we were moving the workloads from on-prem to the cloud. But now the journey has to take into account the workloads have to be distributed across cloud as well as the edge compute, and you have to be very particular about it. Some of the AI machine learning logic would now reside on the edge compute especially the where you need to actually respond in a very timely manner. I think those logics will have to respond very quickly. Um, and the same goes with the data. You know, you have to carefully figure out what data goes into the cloud versus the edge. 
security security is a big thing you know that people always think as an after effect where i think the security has to be thought through holistically right from day one all the work that we did in the cloud security in making sure our containers and microservices are secured properly so that even if one of the microservices or container is hacked it's not going to impact the rest of the system and the solution the same things are applicable in the edge compute as well and in edge compute now one has to you know tighten up the security the vulnerability holes around some of the end devices like iot's and the sensors as well uh, because in some application the iot and sensor devices would be talking to the applications residing in the edge compute so you, you can very well imagine if there is basically a hole in some of the containers applications running on the edge compute you can create the hacker can create an havoc uh, with a lot of iot devices and sensors uh, running in the premises and finally i feel um to better manage you know your your solution because you have to look at the end to end solution you know you have devices in the in the premises then you have your edge compute layer and then you have your cloud layer how do you manage you know this diverse uh, assets uh, physical as well as virtual uh, going from on prem all the way to edge compute and and central cloud how do you manage them through single pane of glass and i think that's where the unified management system comes handy that can not only help you to manage these assets provision them monitor them uh, so that you know it becomes a lot easier uh, for the it teams uh, to to basically uh, to to look into this new paradigm otherwise i think it becomes a lot more challenging for the it teams you know whose budgets are kind of you know uh, staying the same whose manpower is staying the same if they have to go uh you know uh, manage or take care of yet one more management system to manage the edge compute assets uh so i think that part also needs to be think through thought through uh, as you build your uh, solutions which would entail the edge compute uh, edge compute architecture uh, into them so um so with this you know i conclude my talk uh, hopefully it gives you an insight into what the edge compute is what the different use cases are and you know what some of the considerations implement considerations we need to take into account thank you thank you mr rishi for giving us a wonderful opening address on different pillars as part of the transformation strategy